Welcome everybody, this is uh, the Tackle Fleet. My name is Aito Itinen and I am the resident Ivy League um, scout and uh, tackling instructor. We discussed how velocity and transversal help us mitigate incoming damage, but there is also a second part to that equation, signature radius. If you open your ship fittings window from the Neocom or by pressing Alt F, under the targeting drop-down on the right, you will see your ship's signature radius. Smaller ship classes have smaller signatures. Some modules, like the large shield extender, increase your signature passively as long as they are online. There are some modules that bloom your signature only when they are active, like the 500mn micro warp drive, also called an MWD. If you go to the Attributes tab of the module, you can see the Signature Radius modifier. If you compare different MWD types of the same class, you will notice that some types increase your Signature Radius much more than the others. Use your MWD carefully, as both missiles and turrets will apply more damage while it's active. Some ships, like Interceptors, and Assault Frigates have bonuses that reduce MWD signature bloom, making them way harder to hit. MWDs massively increase your ship's speed, but also increase your ship's mass and consume a lot of capacitor and fitting space, beside making your signature bloom. Afterburners are another module that increases your velocity and mass in a smaller measure, consume less cap and fitting, and most importantly, they don't increase your signature radius. Another propulsion module is the micro jump drive, which can be fit on some bigger ships like battleships, battle cruisers, and deep space transports. The micro jump drive has to spool for a certain amount of time and then it will teleport the ship 100 kilometers in the direction it was facing. Command destroyers can fit a special type of MJD, the Micro Jump Field Generator, which will also teleport forward 100 km up to 25 other ships in what is commonly called a bush. The bush MJD or the MWD can all be turned off by a hostile warp scrambler. Warp disruption modules are the core of tackle. They might prevent hostile ships from warping away, shut down some of their propulsion modules, and even reduce the velocity of the ship you have tackled. The warp disruptor, also called point, has one point of warp scramble strength has the longest range of the tackle modules, and all it does is prevent enemies from warping away. The Warp Scrambler, also called Scram, has a very short range, but has more scramble points, and also shuts down MWDs, MJDs, and prevents bushes. It also prevents scrammed ships from taking acceleration gates, from docking in player-owned stations, and from jumping using Sinos. All ships in EVE have one point of warp core strength, but many of them, like the Venture, have bonuses to that number. To prevent a ship from warping away, your warp scramble strength needs to be equal or greater than the ship's warp core strength. If you look at the attribute tab of the warp disruptor, you will see that they have a number defining their warp scramble strength. So, in this case, to stop a venture, you would need a Warp Scrambler with a Warp Scramble Strength of 2 and one Warp Disruptor with a Warp Scramble Strength of 1 applied at the same time. This equals the 3 points of Warp Core Strength on the venture. There is also a module called the Warp Core Stabilizer that when a keep negates one point of warp scramble from hostiles, so a venture with one of those a keep would need two warp scramblers to prevent it from warping away. 
Count the enemy ship low slots to make sure you have enough points in fleet to counter the possibility of them fitting a lot of warp core stabilizers. The Stasis Webifier is a module that reduces the maximum velocity of the targeted ship. This means it does not prevent a ship from warping away, and in fact it might have the opposite effect. Since a ship enters warp when it reaches 75% of its maximum velocity, a web target enters warp faster. Uh, now that we have the tactical overlay and the tactical camera and both velocity and transversal on display, let's see what the navigation commands do. If you click another ship with your left mouse button and hold it down, the radial menu appears. On the top right hand uh, side of your radial menu you have the command to orbit. Without releasing the left mouse button you can start dragging your mouse pointer a bit outside of the wheel so that you will be seeing the distance of your orbit is going to be increasing. Manually you can increase this distance up to 30 kilometers but you can also get your mouse pointer closer to the sector of the command and the distance will be growing smaller. So for now let's say orbit uh, the Myrmidon at 15 or 20 kilometers and see how you will be moving. Basically when you start orbiting your ship is going to be moving into a straight line until it hits the desired distance that you have uh, selected for your orbit. So during the time that you are moving towards your desired orbit, your transversal velocity is going to be zero. Once the selected orbit distance is achieved, all of your speed at that point is going to be transformed into transversal speed. And uh, transversal is a speed that you have in a direction at 90 degrees with the line that connects our ship. The game will calculate the best shortcut basically to maximize your transversal. So you might end up circling your target clockwise or counterclockwise, but there is no command to reverse the direction of your spin. If you keep your left mouse button pressed again on a target that you have selected, you are going to be seeing that on the bottom right hand side there is another command that is called keep at range. The keep at range command works the same way as the orbit command, so if you are still holding your left mouse button down, you can begin to drag it a bit outside of the radial menu, and you will see that your keep at range distance is going to be increasing. So, uh, again, the maximal distance for this is 30 kilometers, but you can choose something in between by simply dragging the mouse button close or further away from the radial menu. So let's say you try to keep the Myrmidon at range at uh, 20 kilometers. When you want to keep at range a target, uh, your ship is going to be moving into a straight line with the target, either approaching or uh, getting away from your selected target, and your transversal velocity again is going to be zero. The moment your ship has uh, achieved the desired distance, so if you are keeping me at range like uh, 20 kilometers, your ship is going to be stopping if I am stopping, or is going to be following me if my uh, own velocity increases. Basically, uh, again, your transversal is going to be zero during all this time. Another way for you to uh, modify your uh, keep at range and uh, orbit distance is by doing so from your uh, selected item uh, window. So, for example, you can uh, go to your selected item window and uh, right-click the orbit button. And it's going to open you a window when you can set your default orbit distance. Once you click that, you can type into the box that appears and you can set up your default orbit distance. That means that uh, each time you decide to orbit and you are not using the radial menu to dynamically change the distance, you will always be orbiting at the distance that you have uh, typed in the box. 
You can do the same for the keep at range command. You can right click the keep at range uh, button on your um, selected item window. You can uh, right click it. You can um, set default the keep at range distance and you can again type in the box and set the default distance. There is also another way uh, which is more simple and straightforward to change the direction you are going in space. Basically, by double clicking in open space into the direction you want to go, your uh, ship is going to be uh, moving into that direction. To make your ship stop, you can press Ctrl spacebar and your ship will be stopping. You can uh, reduce velocity by uh, clicking into any point inside your velocity bar, which is uh, located below your capacitor donut. You can also increase or decrease your own velocity by clicking the minus or plus buttons that you see at the limits of that uh, velocity bar. 